Hey guys, Karen here. So you guys liked the Adhesives 101 videos that I put up a few weeks ago about glue and tape so much that I decided I'm going to expand the series and I'm going to call it Craft Supplies 101. Today we are going to talk about all the different types of paper that you can use in art and crafting and some of you guys suggested that and I thought it was such a great idea. I have this entire box, oh that's heavy, full of tons of different paper and then I went out and bought a whole bunch of more examples to go through. So there is a lot to go through but make sure you stick around until the end of the video because I'm actually having a contest to give away some of these extra pads of paper that I bought. So there is so much to know about different types of paper and I'm sure that I'm gonna miss something or forget some type of paper so please let me know in the comments if you have anything to add, if I got anything wrong, but I know that it can be kind of overwhelming looking down the paper aisle of the craft store. There are so many different types so today I'm gonna try to show you some stuff to look for to try to break down what the differences are. So we're gonna start with your run-of-the-mill printer paper. Paper. I think everybody's used printer paper before, but the main thing I want to point out is the weight of the paper. The printer paper that I have that I think is pretty standard is 20 pounds or 75 grams per square meter. Basically, the US has to, of course, make everything as complicated as possible. So pounds is the US system, but that number could refer to either thicker cover paper or thinner text paper. They're kind of two scales that sit next to each other, whereas the grams per square meter or a GSM is just one scale across every type of paper. How they assign those numbers is a little bit complicated so I'm gonna link to a few articles in the description that kind of go through that and explain it. But for the purposes of this video I'm gonna go with the international system, the grams per square meter. So all you have to remember is that the higher the number the sturdier the paper is. So tracing paper is 40 GSM, printer paper is 75, this cardstock that I have is 100 175 and this really thick mixed media paper is 300. So pretty much every pad of paper will be labeled with the weight in the US, it's both pounds and the GSM. So that's just one thing you'll definitely want to look at when you're choosing the type of paper for your project. So the paper that I use really often in my crafting is cardstock because it's cheap, you get a ton of it for like 10 bucks. It comes in tons of colors and I'll use it just whenever I need some paper that's sturdier than printer paper, I'll often just use it as scrap paper. If you're going to be printing on it, make sure that you double check that it works for your type of printer, whether that's laser, inkjet, or a copy machine. However, if you're going to be printing from an inkjet, I've found that you get the brightest colors if you use the same brand of paper as your printer. So I have an Epson printer, so I use Epson paper, and the prints that I get on this photo paper and on this premium presentation paper matte double-sided are just beautiful. They are so gorgeous. These papers are pretty expensive, so you should just try to save them for, you know, really important projects, but it really does matter the type of paper that you're printing on. The cheap paper, it's just the colors are not going to look as nice, so for like any big final school projects or anything like that, definitely recommend getting uh, the same brand as your printer. Moving on to sketchbooks, here we have your pretty basic sketchbook. Strathmore brand is pretty common, especially here in the US. A lot of the papers I'm going to be showing are from that brand. This video is not sponsored by them, I just think they make really good quality products and they're really easy to find, at least here in the US. So one thing that I like about them is that all of their pads of paper have a brief description on the front of what it's meant to be used for. So this sketchbook is meant for practice of techniques or quick studies with with any dry media. It's acid-free, medium weight, and lightly textured, so this is just kind of a good all-purpose paper for practice projects or quick sketches, anything that's not like a final project, and it is 89 GSM, so it's slightly thicker than printer paper. There's also the drawing pad, which is similar to the sketch pad, but it's meant for finished artwork in dry media, which means no watercolors, no paint, just like charcoal markers, things like that. It's a good all-around paper. It it's medium surface, medium weight, so any sort of drawings that you want to do, not including painting, uh, this is a good choice. So a lot of the other art papers that I have are actually pretty specific with their uses, but they're labeled with the medium that they're meant for. So here we have an acrylic 
paper pad, which is a linen finish, and it's meant for acrylic paint. It's 400 GSM, so it's really thick. You only get 10 pieces of paper in this pad, but it's probably cheaper than buying a whole bunch of canvases if you just want to practice your techniques. Still on the paper made for paint, here I have a watercolor tablet, which is pretty old, so it doesn't have a ton of information about the paper, but you can see that it's really thick, highly textured, that's pretty standard for watercolor paper. And then I don't have one here, but you can also get a pad of paper meant for oil painting, and there are a few words on there that I want to draw your attention to. First is that it's 100% cotton. Paper that's made of cotton is the most durable, the most archival. Something like newsprint that's made of wood pulp is going to yellow and break down a lot faster, which is fine for quick sketches, things like that but not something that you want to keep for a hundred years. Another thing to look out for is acid-free or neutral pH, which is another sign that it's an archival type of paper. I think pretty much all the papers I'm showing are acid-free, except again for the newsprint. It's pretty standard, it's not something that's hard to find, just something to kind of look out for. I also want to bring up cold press versus hot press, which you'll also see for things like illustration boards. Neither one is better or worse than the other, they're just different. Basically, cold press will be a lot more textured, while hot press will be a lot smoother. This is something to keep in mind if you're working with charcoal or watercolors or anything where you really want to show texture, because cold press will be better for that, whereas hot press is better for markers or ink, or if you're going to be scanning your work because it'll pick up more detail because it's a lot smoother. So moving on, I've already mentioned newsprint a few times, but it's the same type of paper that newspapers are made of, only without any ink printed on them. It's a really thin paper, only 52 GSM, which is less than our printer paper, but it's super cheap and charcoal is like butter on it. If you take a drawing class, you'll probably use newsprint for quick studies or like initial concept building, but not for any final projects. The pad that I have here is pretty small, but you can also get easel sized pads. When I was at RISD for drawing class freshman year, we were required to get a newsprint pad that was three and a half feet tall. I am only five feet tall, so it was kind of a funny sight watching me lug that gigantic pad of paper up and down the hill for class every week. I am so glad I do not have to do that anymore. So next we've got pastel paper, which you've guessed it, is for pastels. It's a pretty heavy paper at 160 GSM, and it's pretty heavily textured to really bring out the texture of the pastels. It's double-sided so you can work on both sides of the paper, and it comes in a variety variety of colors, so that you can start from a color other than white if you wanted to. This Canson brand pad of paper also has this really handy chart inside which lists all their different types of paper pads and a whole bunch of different mediums and how well they work together, so I'm going to take a picture of that and put it in the description for you to reference if you want to look at it any closer. And it's pretty similar to the pastel paper, but you can also get a pad of paper specifically for working in charcoal. Charcoal also works great on like mixed media paper and stuff like that, so you don't have to invest in a specific paper for it, but if that's your top medium of choice, you know, it's there if you want it. Speaking of which, we've got mixed media paper, which this one has a vellum surface, which basically just means that it has a medium texture. You might sometimes see the paper saying plate surface, which would mean that it's ultra smooth, or like this Bristol does, it'll just say smooth surface. The mixed media paper is good for wet and dry media, and it's archival, so you can use it for finished artwork. This is a good choice if you work in a big variety of mediums and you don't want to buy a specific paper for each one. Then I also picked up this tone to tan notebook, which is basically just a sketchbook but with tan pages, for when you want to build up both your lights and your darks instead of working from white. Moving on to our thinner papers, we've got tracing paper. I ended up with two pads of this. It's a really thin paper that you can see through if you want to trace things. I think we've all used tracing paper before. It's not acid free, so it's not meant for archival projects, but if you need to trace something and you don't have a light box, uh, tracing paper is your best friend. Slightly more opaque than that is marker paper, which you've guessed it, is perfect for markers. The main selling point is that the markers don't bleed through the paper and the colors show up really well. I'm trying to think about why I own this, why I had to buy it in school, because I didn't do a ton of marker projects, so if you use marker paper for anything other than markers, let me know in the comments because I'm not entirely sure why I own this. I haven't actually used it in ages. 
but if you work in markers a lot, um, you'll, you'll want one. <laughs> Next we've got vellum, which is pretty translucent and kind of plastic-y. It's great for working with pen and ink, the ink just sits on it beautifully. And then the thinnest paper of all is tissue paper, which you generally don't write on because it can rip really easily. It's mainly used for wrapping presents and craft projects, it comes in a ton of colors, and you can usually find it on really good sales right after major holidays. I think this white tissue paper, which isn't even all that I got, I think I got it for less than a dollar after Christmas. And then if you want a paper that's completely transparent, you can get printable transparencies, which originally were used for old school overhead projectors, but you can also print on them or draw on them and cut them up to use in craft projects like I did in this book that I made while I was at RISD. Moving on to thicker paper, we're gonna start with Bristol. Bristol is a really high quality paper meant for finished artwork. The one that I got is a smooth surface meant for pen and ink, but you can get it in tons of different textures and finishes. You can also get Bristol boards, which are finished on both sides and are a little bit thinner than an illustration board. An illustration board is only finished on one side. It's great for scanning or anything where you really want it to be on like a solid board and not just a piece of paper. And then we've got museum board or mounting board. This is one of my favorites. I use it all the time. It mostly just comes in neutral colors because it's often used to mat a photo in like a picture frame, but I like to use it because the edge is the same color as the board and it's double-sided and um, it comes in a bunch of different thicknesses. So you can use it in a ton of different craft projects. So when you're buying boards like this, especially at places like Michael's, they'll tell you whether it's hot press or cold press and and what mediums work best on it. So the whole system is a little bit foolproof. You don't have to go in and like memorize a ton of different stuff. So besides your fancy pants art boards, you can also get chipboard, which is just a non-corrugated cardboard. We have foam core, which comes in a whole bunch of different weights, usually in very large boards. It always has a layer of foam in the middle, so it doesn't roll up. It's really sturdy. We've also got poster board, which I'm sure everybody has used at some point in their life. It's just a poster sized piece of thick paper. It comes in a variety of colors, you can get them super cheap. And then we've also got bookboard, which basically looks exactly like chipboard, it's just archival, so that your books that you make will last for years and years and they won't like break down. To be honest, I kind of use museum board interchangeably with bookboard, but if you're like a serious bookmaker, uh, bookboard is out there for you to get. So moving on to craft papers, we've got some construction paper, which is a cheap colored paper often used by children. The colors aren't the brightest, it's not acid free, it's not archival, so I don't usually use it in my projects. If you're looking for a brightly colored paper, I'd recommend either a colored cardstock or origami paper instead. Speaking of which, origami paper is a square colored paper used for making origami. It comes in a variety of colors, it's pretty thin, and the color is usually only printed on one side. So the scrapbook paper aisle is probably my favorite aisle in the craft store because scrapbook paper comes in so many different colors and textures and patterns. Usually you can get them for under a dollar for each sheet and most of this box is filled with scrapbook paper. You can get pads of scrapbook paper under a specific theme like this uh, Christmas themed one or you can buy it by the sheet and it's usually about the same weight as cardstock just with fun patterns printed on it. But if you want a lot of one pattern, you can get wrapping paper, which obviously is used to wrap gifts. It's usually a bit thinner than scrapbook paper, but these days lots of companies are making some really nice patterns, like this silver wood grain that I got from Target last year. You can of course also get drawing paper and newsprint on rolls if you think you're going to need a ton of it, or maybe if you work at a school. I just don't have any because I don't go through it that fast. So speaking of school, I think we all used graph paper in math class, it's pretty cheap just another kind of fun texture that you can incorporate into your crafting. You can also get marbled paper, which is often used in the front and the back of books. And palette paper is a pad of paper used to make a temporary paint palette. This one doesn't have it, but sometimes they'll have a hole in the middle so that you can hold it like an old school painter. Then we've got sticker paper, which you can print on and it has adhesive on the back so you can cut it into whatever shape you want to make custom stickers. We've got sandpaper, which is used to sand down a rough surface. I don't know if it really counts in the same category of paper as the rest of what I'm showing you, but it has paper in its name, so sandpaper. And we've got transfer paper, which you write on top and then it transfers what you've written to the sheet below it, like in a checkbook. And then I don't know if this one really counts as paper either, 
but you can get foam sheets which are often adhesive and sometimes glittery like mine and just kind of another fun texture to play around with in your crafting. And finally, one last thing, when I was at Michael's I picked up a scratch board which you can scratch away to make a drawing. You can definitely make these, Sea Lemon just had a really good video about how to make this yourself but if you don't want to do that, you can always just buy one. Okay, that was everything. That was a lot. I think I've been talking for a good, like, 25 minutes. So the photos that I showed from in a store are all from Michael's, but I wanted to give a shout out to Blick Art Supplies because their website is so well organized. It has so much information about what each art product is used for, and their website is basically invaluable for this video series that I'm making. So if you want to just browse through a whole bunch of different craft supplies and learn all about them, them. I'll link that down below. So, okay, on to the contest. I'm sure some of you guys have just skipped ahead to this part, so go back. Go watch the video. I bought a whole bunch of these examples that I showed I just bought for this video, and I'm probably not going to go through these in the near future, so rather than having them just sit on my craft shelf unused for the next few years, I thought that I would give them away to one of you guys. So to enter, all you have to do is leave a comment about what you would use all this paper for, whether you're starting art school in the fall, or you're taking art classes, or you just really like to draw and you have some projects in mind. To enter, you have to start your comment with the word entry, so that I know that you're entering the contest, and you have to be at least 18 and live in the United States. So in one week, I will pick my favorite comment, I'll send you a message, you'll send me your address, and then I'll mail out all of these pads of paper, including maybe a few other little goodies. I don't know, I haven't put it all together yet. So I'm going to put the full rules and a list of exactly what you're going to get down in the description, so please read that before you enter. So I'd hate for you to win and get your hopes up and then it turns out you're not 18 or something and you're not eligible, so please read that. Please make sure you're eligible before uh, you enter. Oh, and just so you know, this stuff is not sponsored by any company. I bought it all with my own money and I haven't done a contest in like forever, so if if this one goes well, maybe I'll do more in the future. Um, yeah, I hope you guys like this idea. Okay, so that's going to be it for me. If you want to see more of these uh, crafting craft supply 101 videos, you can watch the video about glue right there and the video about tape right there. I'm thinking maybe like scissors and cutting tools next or maybe different types of paint. I don't know, let me know if there's any topic that you really want to see. And I have been talking for way too long, I'm gonna let you get back to your life now. I will see you all again next week. Bye everyone!